I'm honored today to, to share the pulpit with one of the uh, sons of the house, Lord have mercy. Even I call him my uncle, my son. I, I remember when he was born then, hallelujah, amen. I, I, I used to rock him. I can't rock him no more, hallelujah. I break my arm, hallelujah. But oh my goodness, what a great young man. In-house pastor, yeah. amen. Elder Denzel Tucks will be coming to, to finish up this message today. And we are excited about what the Lord is going to share with you. For those of you who may, may be joining us the first time our consecration, this year deals with the fact that God told us to listen, to listen and to hear. And in 2021, he gave us a pattern of the 20th chapter and the 21st verse for those uh, books that have that or the closest thing to it. So here we are now with the book of Ruth, amen, starting the second week of this great, great, great consecration. And of course, Ruth only has four chapters, but it does have in the fourth chapter, verses uh, 21, 20 and 21. So we were led of the Lord to use Ruth, and my God, it is prophetic. Do you hear what I'm saying? All of you who like prophecy, I want you to put this together and see this has to be a God thing for all of this to fall the way it is falling. <laughs> Hallelujah, we hear in this text, uh, there's a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land of, of Bethlehem, Judah. Hallelujah, Bethlehem, Judah. The house of bread in the place of praise. Beth, 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 house. Hallelujah, house of bread. Bethlehem, hallelujah, or the bread house. Thank you, Bishop Johnson. Thank you, Bishop Chapman. Thank you, Bishop Young. Hallelujah. Got a bread house. Got a Bethlehem up in Middletown. Hallelujah. In other words, there are places in the city where people can come and get some bread. And we got bread over there. Hallelujah. In the lobby. I meant to have somebody bring them out and sell them all around the pulpit today. But I forgot about that. You know I love the props. Hallelujah. But the bread that I'm talking about today is a different kind of bread. But look at this, if you please. We find that this story, hallelujah, Elimelech, in the the name of Jesus, which means God is my king, was married to Naomi, hallelujah, which means my delight or delightful, and they were having a hard time in the place of bread, so they started to, decided to go to Moab, good God almighty, I want to caution anybody who will go to Moab or go to Edom, because the place didn't start right, hallelujah, Moab means from my father. And you know the story of that. That's Lot's girl. When they ran from Sodom and Gomorrah and got into the mountains and they got their daddy drunk and say, so our seed won't pass from the earth. We're going to lay with our father. And they laid with their dad. Look out somebody. You know God ain't in that mess. Hallelujah. And they had Moab and they had Edom and they have been a in the side of the church and the people of God all the days of their lives. Hallelujah. So here we go. They said, let's go over to Moab. I heard the grass is greener in the other country. Well, why is the grass greener? Is it really greener? Or is it AstroTurf? Good God Almighty. And somebody said, thank you, Julius Freeman. The grass is greener because it's got more manure on it. Hallelujah. So you better decide before you switch channels, before you change stations, before you run all over the place. Did the grass really green up? Are you being deceived? Not willing to pay the price? Well, I gotta move because this preacher over here, he pushing me in the name of Jesus. So we find here that the two of them came back to Bethlehem. But what I need to do for you today, I need to set the stage. I need to give you the background of why this scripture is so very, very important to us. Well, I found myself and Gregory Emmanuel found himself in a Moab moment. Good God Almighty. In a Moab mountain. When we look at the loss we've been through. Oh 
God, folk dying everywhere. Hallelujah. And I want to notice something, tell you something. You look at what Naomi said when the people came to greet her. When they said, Naomi, home. Hallelujah. She said, don't call me Naomi. Oh, don't call me Naomi because I'm not delightful anymore. I'm not any delight anymore. Call me Mar because I'm in bitterness. The Lord has dealt with me to the point that I'm bitter. Well, great Emmanuel, we've had loss too, but thank God we didn't get bitter. I think we're getting better. Hallelujah. We've gone through. I'm looking at Sister Wheeler. You lost your husband. You lost your dad, but you didn't get bitter. God is making you better. What I'm saying is, look at this. When some folk got so depressed, good God Almighty, hallelujah. I was over there the other day trying to put people back in place, LeVon. And I was talking to Denzel, and I was talking to Jonathan Lee. And every time I was talking to them, trying to get the names together, as the Lord was telling me who to put here and there, I break down and start crying. Because when I consider the loss, when I consider that James Free was the first family that my wife and I went to, and said, I said, James, you know, we started together a long time ago when you and Cassie worked in the ministry. And we went over there and we prayed together. And now he's gone. Hallelujah. But I didn't get better. I'm getting better. When I consider one Macmillan, oh God, hallelujah, all those years, all over the country working together, all the dreams we had to do something great for the Lord. And we did. And now he's gone. But I didn't get better. I can imagine what Ruth and Naomi went through. I can look in my life. I can look at this church. Oh, God. And even though I was a pastor, I still had my father in love, father in law, still in the house. I could still go to him. And believe me, he would still come to me. Hallelujah. But now he's gone. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, if you're in a Moab moment, if you've got a Moab mountain, if you have a Moab monstrosity, don't let it make you bitter. Let God make you better. Let God stand up in you. Let God turn it around. I call this Ruth's Requiem and Ruth's Hallelujah Renaissance. She went from a place of death and sadness to a place of revitalization, a place of resurgence, a place of rescue. Yes, thank you, thank you. Even a roof revival. Thank you, Pastor Urshan. Good God Almighty. What I'm telling you is don't let somebody define you just because of where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's something. I need to say today even about this situation that has me a little puzzled. Hallelujah. Elder Tom's going to get us in Bethlehem but I got to tell you why we had to go back home. Did you hear that? That's a rhema word for somebody today. You need to take your crazy self back home. What you're running from. What you're looking for. Why you're out there. Don't you know the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. You need to come on to the bread house. You need to come on to the blessed house and let God enlarge you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, he'll make it all right. He'll make it all right. Somebody put all right in the chat. Good God Almighty. Somebody need to say, I'm going to go home. Hallelujah. You got to tell them how to get home. You got to tell them what's waiting for them when they decide to leave Moab. Moab should never be your permanent location, your permanent residence. It's just a pass-through 
place uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, hallelujah. I need to move on over here. Uh, when I was looking at Ruth's requiem uh, and, and, and Naomi's requiem, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and, and, and Ruth means friendship. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but she was married to my Lord, uh, which meant sick, uh, which meant to become sick. Uh, I was telling them the tubs. I got a little puzzle. Why in the world did Naomi and Abimelech name their children such terrible names? I didn't understand it. Jewish culture, they always try to project the character or the nature of a child. And maybe it was prophetic. I don't know if they changed their names. Hallelujah. But it seemed like when they got to Moab, one was named Malon. And one was named Chalion, a Chalion, and his name meant pining or destruction or wasting away. Why would you have two children and give them such devastating names? My God, look at this. Even after they had died, my God, when the mother would remember her sons, she would remember their names and be reminded of God. I've lost sickness and I've lost pining away and destruction. Well, maybe that's a good thing because she didn't lose them and that was dead. So I see a little something in that, but it's not settled in my spirit yet. My God, when I remember those that were lost, I'm so glad I don't remember them about being sick and dead and wasting away in destruction. I remember the good things that they brought into my life. I remember the sermon. I remember all the outreach in the name of Jesus. When I think about the town in my day, I think about all the times he would be so encouraging. Even hallelujah. When he sat back there with the wheelchair, when he could no longer walk around. I remember all the trips in the name of Jesus with the voices of Emmanuel. When I remember the gods, I remember the God encouraging me down through the years. I remember Mother Betty dancing all over the place. She two steps down one aisle and up another. So when I remember my loss, I'm still being stricken and I'm not being bitter. Tell God, thank you that of all I've been through, I'm still not bitter. All I've been through, you made me better. All I've been you help me praise him because I'm trying to get back to Bethlehem. I got to get back. I got Bethlehem in my view. And not just Bethlehem, but Bethlehem Judah. In other words, when I get there, it just won't be about bread. It's also going to be about praise. Well, I told you, let's get back to the text. And my time is running out. Oh, well, the sex was Boaz of Bozo. Good God Almighty, I looked up Bozo, LeVon. I went and got the historicity of Bozo, and it's just a mess any way you look at it. I said, Lord, now I see. Deacon Holland, now I see what God told me to use that title. You see, in the replacement, I need a Boaz, hallelujah, and not a Bozo. Good God Almighty, I don't need a clown up in here. I don't need a clown spirit in the name of Jesus to replace these great men and women that's gone on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Bozo was an attention getter. I don't need an attention getter who will be a church splitter in the name of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? I need a Boaz. Boaz means swift. Boaz means inner strength or the strength within. Hallelujah. In order to replace a Kenny Bailey and a Judy Bailey, I don't need a clown. Yes, Good God no. Almighty. I need somebody with a Boaz anointing. Somebody that's full of compassion. Somebody who will look at and be able to evaluate. And I'm so glad I've waited and I'm still waiting. I just didn't stick no 
somebody in there to replace Carrie Taylor. Good God Almighty. I can't remember when I go to Carrie and no matter what I say to him, by the time we finish, you run. Hallelujah. Yes, I would know that if I talk to Carrie, I'm going to get a tongue talking response. I'm going to get an anointed response. And she's going to say, Hallelujah. I don't need a bozo replacing somebody like that. I don't need somebody that's half sticking all over their head. Acting like a clown. I hope you got that. Hallelujah. I don't need somebody that just want to be the center of attention. God ain't in that. Hallelujah. And thank you, sweet brown. Ain't nobody got time for that. I need a Boaz who will stand up. Glory to God. When I think about L.O.S., my God. Hallelujah. And thinking matters. My God. All that loss. All of that time of Moab and mourning in the name of Jesus. I'm glad I'm waiting. I'm glad I let God talk to me. I'm glad that I believe in my heart that the people that He is replacing, hallelujah, the new people coming on, they have a mentality, they have an anointing, they have a dedication. Oh God, to pull in to connect. To the ministry that's here. Well, let me give you some more good news in spite of all that we went through. But yet and still, there was a miracle in Moab. During our Moab moment, the Lord blessed Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple as of yesterday to have four. One for the north, one for the south, one for the east, and one for the west. Individuals that have reached a hundred years old. Everybody didn't go out. Mother man yesterday. Hallelujah. Oh God bless her in that hospital room. Oh God to turn 100 years old. And even though she's an old shot, ready to go and all of that. And the family said, Lord, your will be done. Look at God. Hallelujah. Look at Mother Wooden. 101. Mother Wallace about to be 101. Brother Wallace about to be 104. Hallelujah. What am I telling you? You can go through your Moab moment. You can go through your Moab mountain. But God still can preserve you. God still can keep you. God still can strengthen you. God still can make a way out. God still can bring you home. God can open up the way. God lay the foundation. Hallelujah. So we're not standing. In the name of Jesus. Well, I want to tell you, I'm so grateful that my little time is about gone and I'm about done. What I want to tell you is greater Emmanuel and all those that's listening. Hallelujah. No matter where you put your foot on the whose table in the name of Jesus. Don't let your Moab moment, don't let your requiem, don't let your dirge, don't let your elegy, don't let any of those things bring you down and make you bitter. We rejoice today that of all we've been through, we still got joy. Joy! Unspeakable and full of glory. Joy! Oh God. And then, let me say this, greater Emmanuel. Hallelujah. And I know I didn't call every name, and I can't do that in the name of Jesus, but I did call some representatives of all that we've been through. Thank you, candy man. Hallelujah, brother George, in the name of Jesus. But we just didn't go through a loss in the house. We had loss out of the house. My God, Sister Grace Zite, Zite, lost a dad. Very good friend. Oh God, of Bishop Bowers and our family. He was in their wedding. Mother Hill, two sons. And Lord, I do miss Wade Jr. Hallelujah. Linda and Janet, your brothers. Elder Buckner and 
Hey, your brothers in love. Hallelujah. Both in a short distance of time. Sister Wyatt, your precious mother. Crystal Watson, your brother and your nephew. And someone even said a sister. Ellie and Brenda Bishop. Oh God, you lost your sister. The Brewster family. You lost your uh, your Aunt Esther. And then your uh, uncle was just funeralized this week. But you didn't get better. The Lord is making you better. Look at it. Dr. Allen, your cousin Miriam, Miriam Sims, another good family friend, babysitting my wife and her sisters, Pam Ruffin, God Almighty, your dad, and your stepfather, Cheryl Bowden, Bowden, your precious mother, but God still got you preaching. Do you hear what I'm saying? We were all having Moab moments. We were all having Moab mountains. But oh God, even, hallelujah, when we had that huge financial situation due to the passing of our dear Bishop Bound, we found out there was a bank in Bethlehem. Oh God, God opened up the windows of heaven and poured us out a blessing while we were still in Moab trying to make our way home. And then he opened up the hearts of the saints and the saints gave like never before. We were smaller in number, but greater in power, because God can take your little and make it great. God can take your little and make it marvelous in the name of Jesus. Well, hallelujah. I told you about all the loss in my family. Just buried a cousin of COVID in Dayton a couple of weeks ago. Hallelujah. My God. Then Deacon Wheeler Levis. Hallelujah. But that family is sitting in here today. But the family of Karen Taylor was so blessed that we love the song. And look at Sister Freed and Joel who'll be preaching in this. And just Tina still going on in the name of the Lord. Sister Haney lost her mother to COVID. And the whole family got sick. But they're yet holding on because they know that God is able to bring you through a Moab situation. The Robs, Melanie and Derek, lost their nephew and had all manner of sickness. We lost Sister Ida Moore, Sheila Wilson, and Mike. Lost Mother Stella, who used to be a part of this ministry. Roxanne Baker, lost her mother. And the list goes on and on. But these saints are yet praising God. They are yet in the house. Come on, Elder Tubbs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at the genealogy of David, all the way back, you'll see a combination of anointed names. But this is something the Lord gave me for Ruth. And I'll say this, and I'm taking my seat. Good God Almighty, look at Ruth. From the Requiem to Renaissance, her first husband was sick, and the second husband was old. But old Boaz was swift, and the man had gold. He had the strength within, and he was bold. And as a kingdom redeemer, he cried, this woman is sold. Hallelujah. He gathered Ruth and Naomi, put them back in the fall, and they have all become a member of the greatest story ever told. That's what will happen when you let God bless you, when you let God bring you from your Moab mountain, from your Moab moment, back to Bethlehem. Elder terms, how can we get there? Is there an apartment waiting? Is there a building? Hallelujah. Do we have to go into a trail? What's waiting for us in Bethlehem? What blessings does the Lord have for us? Somebody shout hallelujah! Woo. Somebody shout hallelujah one more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are the most common. Let's go to Bethlehem. Somebody said in the sanctuary, let's go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem. Ruth chapter number four. We're going one back to verse number 21. It says, and Salmon beget Boaz, and Boaz beget Obed, and Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David. But I want to focus on Ruth chapter two, verse one, where it says, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's. A mighty man of wealth, a family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Somebody shout Boaz one more time. So far we've heard this morning from Bishop concerning the context of famine that we find here in the book of Ruth. 
But we see here that there's a threshold of a dynamic shift as Naomi is wallowing in the reproach brought upon her. She urges her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, to depart from her as the hand of the Lord has gone out against her. Uh, but I pause this morning, yet not to digress too far, but it is worthy of mention that there are some watching today uh, that feel the reproach of Naomi. Uh, you're saying, you're saying, I've lost so much. I, my disobedience has even deprived me of my heart's desires, and I, I deserve to live the rest of my life in a state of famine and loss. You've even told your family and friends, you've told your loved ones uh, that to do something better with their life and not to waste time tolerating you reasoning within yourself uh, that you can that you you're fine with settling in an apparent condemnation of God upon your life but may I suggest this morning that just as Naomi in this text here uh, though she suffers loss due to events of disobedience though she suffers loss due to where she from being in the land of Moab she is proof that as long as God keeps breath in your body, uh, there is a turnaround available for you. I wish somebody would help me preach today. Uh, there is a turnaround uh, fixing to take place in your life. Uh, uh, and you may, if you may not have the capacity of your own to navigate what God will do next, but He has and will position you to go with somebody that will not abandon you in this season, but rather they will undergird you in your process of restoration. Somebody will shout hallelujah. Uh, so then we see here as Ruth remains with Naomi, uh, though she is still burdened by of their losses, they come to a land called Bethlehem. Somebody shout it again, Bethlehem. Uh, they go to a land called Bethlehem. Uh, and you know what the city of Bethlehem represents, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but what captivates me here is not yet the city, but rather the season of their travel. Uh, oh, hallelujah to God. For we see here uh, that at the time of which Naomi and Ruth would go to Bethlehem, uh, uh, they would go during the Passover. Lord have mercy. Uh, and I came to tell somebody in the midst of a severe transition uh, that there is no mistake. There is no loss. There there is no hard place uh, that God cannot vindicate you from. Uh, but when God has a plan for your life, uh, he will disregard uh, the famine that you're in uh, and take you to the bread. Uh, I need you to help me preach and tell somebody that came with you. Uh, it's time to go where the bread is. Uh, because not only is the bread there, uh, but I'm getting in position to praise God. Uh, you heard what Bishop said, we're going to Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, I'm going to the place of prayer. Uh, uh, but the first step, though it may not be an intentional nail there, uh, but the first step was to get out of Moab. Uh, somebody shout, get out of Moab. Uh, you might as well type it in those comments this morning. Get out of Moab. Uh, I know you have some attachments in Moab. Uh, I know that you have some comfortability there. Uh, I know that Moab has sentimental value to you. Uh, that's where you were with the Limanac. Uh, that's where those sons were born. Uh, you're used to Moab. Uh, uh, but if you don't come out of Moab, yeah, you are detrimental to yourself. Yeah, you are most hazardous to your future. Yeah. But I came to prophesy to somebody yeah, that will take the next 10 seconds and give God praise. Yeah, but that this is your Passover season. Uh, oh, we start to preach here. Uh, this is your Passover season. Uh, get ready for God uh, to cause you to transcend uh, the mistakes of your past. Uh, get ready for God uh, to make a way in the wilderness uh, and rivers in the desert. Uh, and I like to just use that word Passover uh, because it also prophesies to me uh, that whatever I've been in, uh, I'm no longer going to be uh, beneath it. Uh, but God's going to give me the power uh, to pass over it. Yeah. I need you to just do your hand like this in your living room. Yeah. Because God is about to give you the authority yeah. to pass over. Yeah. The trial pass over. Yeah. The mind games pass over. Yeah. The tribulation pass over. Yeah. The Lord, somebody clap those hands. Yeah. And shout hallelujah. Yeah. And so I came to tell somebody today yeah. to get ready for the removal of the reproach. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Get ready yeah. for God to remove the reproach. Yeah. Uh, because God is about to draw nigh to you. Yeah? And though God knows how to allow you yeah? to reap those things that you sow. Yeah? Though you have to pay a recompense yeah? of some of the things yeah? and decisions that you made. Yeah? God's not going to allow yeah? of the recompense yeah? to trump his renaissance. Yeah? Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Yeah? God's not going to allow yeah? what you go through yeah? to have more dominion. 
dominion hell, or authority hell, than what God wants to do in you. Hell. But God is about to draw nigh to you. Hell, because I came to, to tell somebody hell, that loss has a way hell, of distancing the believer. Hell, not from the presence of God, hell, but from the awareness of God's presence. Hell. God never left us hell, when we lost who we lost. Hell. Oh, but sometimes we get confused in our own flesh hell, in the thinking that God has left us. Hell, that God has hell, taken the spirit from above of us. Hell. Oh, but I'm so glad that when God is silent, hell, it's not because he has left the building. Hell, but when God is silent, hell, that's because he's working behind the scenes. Hell. As a matter of fact, you think you're alone. Hell, oh, but the reality of the matter hell, is that you've reached this point hell, because you're approaching a breakthrough. Hell. I'm going to give you 15 seconds hell, to open up your mouth hell, and give God praise hell, for the breakthrough hell, that's around the car. Hallelujah to God. Hell. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Hell. There's a breakthrough around the corner. Hell. And so we headed to a call. See, we only have a few minutes. Hell. Uh, but the Bible hell, uh, gives me something to be excited about. Hell. Uh, for we see that the Bible introduces us hell, to this gentleman whose name was Boaz. Hell. Somebody shout Boaz again. Hell. Uh, he was a great man of wealth. Hell. The Bible says he was from the family of the man in the Melech, hell, who would be Naomi's husband. Hell. The late husband of Naomi. Yeah. And we see that Ruth says to Naomi here, yeah. let us go to the field yeah. and inquire of his attention. Yeah. Thank God for Ruth. Yeah. Uh, thank God for Ruth. Yeah. Uh, because we see that now Naomi yeah, was stricken with poverty. Yeah. Naomi was still dancing yeah, at the pity party. Yeah. Naomi was still grieving yeah, over what she had lost. Yeah. Oh, but thank God for Ruth. Yeah. Because Ruth yeah, was radical. Call hell. Ruth hell, was determined. Hell. Ruth, hell, I'm even persuaded, hell, had her ear hell, told to the things of the Spirit. Hell, and she said, I'm going hell, after the man hell, in whose sight I shall find grace. Hell. How would Ruth know that? Hell, that she would go to the field hell, and find grace hell, with Boaz. Hell. How could she possibly conclude hell, that she would find grace? Hell. May I suggest to imagine this morning yeah, that when you are born with a purpose yeah, loss does not discourage you yeah, but it makes you anticipate the grace of God yeah, when you have God's hand on your life yeah, uh, you're mindful of what Isaiah said yeah, that no weapon formed against you yeah, shall be able to prosper yeah, and the return that rise against you yeah, God says you have the power to contain yeah, and so Ruth said I understand yeah, the requiem of my mother-in-law yeah, I understand yeah, how she feel a life of hard knocks yeah, and she feel woe is me yeah, but I'm not going to let that change my confession yeah, but I declare yeah, that once I go to the field yeah, I shall find grace yeah. in other words I'm going after the right one yeah. I need you to help me preach and tell somebody yeah, wait for the right one yeah. hallelujah to God yeah. she says I'm going to the field yeah. no wonder Boaz I mean Jesus yeah. he said the heart is true yeah, it's plenty of yeah, shit, but the labor is a few. Yeah, pray ye therefore yeah, for the Lord of the harvest yeah, that he will send for the laborers yeah, into his harvest. Yeah, you've got to make it up in your mind yeah, that in spite of the famine, yeah, I'm going to the field. Yeah, in spite of my failures, yeah, I'm going to the field. Yeah, in spite of my fear, yeah, I'm going to the field. Yeah, for in the field, yeah, not only yeah, well, I find grace, yeah, but I came to tell somebody yeah, that shepherds yeah, abide in the field. Yeah, for the Lord yeah, is my shepherd. Yeah, I shall not want. Yeah, he maketh me yeah, to lie down yeah, in green pastures. Yeah, he leadeth me yeah, beside the still waters. Yeah, he restored my soul. Yeah, he gave to our walk. Yeah, this sounds like Ruth and Naomi. Yeah, he gave to our walk yeah, through the valley hell, of the shadow hell, of death hell. Ruth and Naomi hell, were losing hell, their closest loved ones hell. they lost their husbands hell. they lost their sons hell. death hell, and consumed them hell. death hell, and brought about reproach hell, around their life 
hell, but it says I will fear hell, no evil hell. You might as well put it in the comments hell. I will fear hell, no evil hell. Well, I told you a few months ago hell that God hell has not given you hell the spirit hell of fear hell, but the power hell of love hell and of a sound mind hell. Why can I fear evil hell? Because God hell is with me hell. I'm about to come across the field hell because God hell is all through the text hell that prepares the table hell. Let me finish this 23rd song hell for your devotional hell before me hell in the presence hell of my enemies hell. Thou anoint my head with oil hell. I came to tell somebody hell in the midst of your loss hell in the midst of your grief hell in the midst of your Moab hell situation hell. You're about to come out of this hell with a double anointing hell. You're going to Bethlehem hell with more grace hell. You're going to Bethlehem hell with more power hell. You'll come a run over hell and he will hell cause goodness hell and mercy hell to follow you hell all the days of your life hell. My time is up today hell. There's so much in the text hell. But if I could cut to the chase hell and tell somebody watching hell the mystery of the text hell is that Boaz hell prophesies hell to Jesus Christ hell. Boaz hell gives us foresight hell to the Lord Jesus hell for we were more bites hell cursed by sin hell full of shame hell and void of hope hell but when we finally hell made the decision hell to let go hell of what we thought hell that we could not live without hell when we finally hell decided hell to let some things die hell when we finally hell determined hell to wait for the right one hell out of a town hell called Bethlehem hell a kinsman hell redeemer hell emerges hell out of a town hell called Bethlehem hell you shall find hell your savior hell she shall hell bring forth the son yeah. and thou shalt hell call his name hell Jesus hell the man shall Jesus hell but he shall save hell the Moabites hell from their sins hell I came to tell you hell that Jesus is saying hell don't go looking hell for another feel hell that's what my boy has told hell Ruth hell when he laid his eyes on her hell he said don't go hell after another feel hell but all that you need hell my hands will provide hell and I came to tell somebody hell that's been contemplating hell another alternative hell that's been contemplating hell Lord hell I've been asking you for this hell for decades now hell and you still haven't done it hell maybe I'm in this in vain hell the Lord said hell don't go after hell another feel hell but I hell am the way hell I hell am the truth hell and I hell am the life hell abide in me hell and my word hell abide in you hell I will be hell your shelter hell I will be hell your rock hell I will be hell your provider hell I will be hell your way maker hell I will be hell your savior hell I will be hell your healer hell I wonder hell if I could get hell the ten people hell in the room today hell and a few out there watching hell that I get up where you are hell and show God hell Leaving hell, Bethlehem now hell, but I'ma stay here hell and praise you hell. I've been through too much hell, not to worship you hell. I've been through the storm hell and the rain hell. I've been through heartaches hell, storms and pain hell, but I've made it hell to my praise place hell. I made it hell to my renaissance hell. I made it hell to my breakthrough hell. I made it hell to my deliverance hell. And I won't hell. Turn back hell. I'm not settling hell for bozos hell. I'm not settling hell for the clouds hell that are the enemies hell of my soul hell. I'm not settling hell for the bozos hell that play mind games hell on my past hell. But if any man hell be in Christ hell, if any man hell makes it to Bethlehem where 
Jesus is. He's a new creature. Somebody open up your mouth and give God glory. to look across this church and tell somebody come out of boy come out of sin come out of shame come out of pain come out of pressure come out and go into the house of bread for he is the bread of life the grace the God that would bring us salvation half of here is appearing it's appearing on your campus. It's appearing to your generational curses. The grace of God is your portion right now. Get ready to be delivered from your requiem. Be delivered from your sorrow. Be delivered from your stronghold. And go into the renaissance. Let God change. Boaz Boaz versus Bozo. Come on, sir. There's some clowns out there on a daily basis trying to turn you away from God. Amen. And the power of being a clown is that its whole purpose is to give humor to a distorted reality. Come on, sir. Well, well, well. Speak. So why capitalize? Why listen? Why absorb the confessions of the clowns? <laughs> when God has already predestinated you before the foundation of the world. Amen. He says, All that you need you, Jesus. is in this field. Yeah. Why go looking for another? I am the good shepherd. I am the harvester. I am the one that's going to do everything that you need. Preach. No more bozos in 2021. Glory. Because the truth of the matter, if we can tell the truth, Bishop, I don't want to be sat down. But we've had some bozos that's trying to interrupt what God is doing even right in this house. Come on, Amen. sir. Whoa. And some bozos, I love y'all saints, but they're on the other side of that screen somewhere. Bozos. bozos. Oh, yeah. No more clowns. But this is the season of the call. Oh, yeah. No more clowns. This is the hour for the call to rise up. And do what God has created us to do. Creation awaited for the manifestation of the sons of God's soul. Do, don't just be yeah. complacent in, in the requiem and all the issues that you had in the past, the loss that you experienced. Yes, you lost some things. Yes, you lost some major things and people. Yes, there are some things still hanging by the thread even right now. Well, well, well. We can't honestly say that when the clock struck midnight in 2021 that everything was made brand new and perfect. But there are some things that we still had to deal with that came over from 2020 with us. Oh, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? Just as Bozo told Ruth, God is telling you today, don't go looking for another field. Stay right here. If you're determined to stay right here where God is and allow God to do a brand new thing on the inside of you, I need you to put those hands together in here and right there in that stream today and give God one more praise if you believe that God will perfect everything concerning you. Somebody open up your mouth and give God one more praise in this house today. Oh, 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 don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Amen. Lord protect us. Lord protect us. Hallelujah. And talk about a tag team. Now, 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 listen to this. Ruth, Naomi was out. Out. And here comes the non saint. Yeah. Hallelujah. The heathen woman. Heathen. Lord have mercy. And says, Mama, I ain't leaving you because the God I had yes. didn't do nothing for me like with the God you got. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it'll take an outsider yes, sir. to come in to show us what we got. But here's the point. When they got together, there was a convergence. Yes. Huh? Once Naomi started getting it back, Pastor, and, and she now begins to tell Ruth, you need to do this. You need to do that. Hallelujah. Don't mess this up. No, no, no. I'm, Pastor, what about it? Then Ruth says, I'm going to do everything. I, I hear you. Uh -huh. 
and I'm going to do everything yes, you want me to do. Do, do you understand yes. that once we get together, yes. once we get together, once we have a convergence of where we're supposed to be, yeah, yeah. hallelujah, now Ruth yields back to a mother law yields back to the hierarchy and say, you know what? Talk about that. I'm going to do everything you're telling me to do because we're in this together. It's just like Bishop, I reminded when I was in school how, how, how there were people when they were not in the faith, they didn't know they didn't have the conviction that I have for God. And then when they would see that you had some behaviors that were not like God, they recognized when you were not doing something in your character. God is saying, I'm about to create some people in your life that will move you to a better discernment, a better conviction, a better encouragement to do the things of God. And then when that convergence happens, like Bishop said, you, both of you will win. Both of you will develop. And God will favor both of you. Matter of fact, when Ruth had that baby, the Bible says that Naomi found joy. Yeah. Found joy in the production of Ruth. Yeah. Listen, listen, Everything listen. that she thought she lost came back full circle. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> we got time. Don't go nowhere. Look, 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 look. Lord, I'm glad you mentioned the baby. I'm glad you mentioned the baby because God had a setup. Sometimes, oh God, when you go through stuff, you don't even realize the setup that God has. Let me find it here. Oh God, it was all in, all in, in, in the limits here. In the name of Jesus. Lord, here we go. My God, what were those last 421? And Salmon beget Boaz, and Boaz beget Obed, and Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David, and Nashon had begot, Nashon had begot Salmon. Their names tell the story of victory. Good God Almighty, if you don't get back home, you can't, you can't get back to the victory. Good God Almighty, they were there in a foreign land, but a Bimelech, hallelujah, hallelujah, the son of Ram, his name meant my kinsman is a noble, and he begot nation, which meant enchant, and you got to remember, this family tree had problems because Judah did not want to give seed. His old bad boys got killed by God because they didn't want to fulfill the promise. Hallelujah. But Tamar, another foreigner, if you please, had to come in and get the rest. And look at this. Salmon, which name meant, oh God, garment and mantle, began Boaz. And Boaz meant swiftness with strength inside. And he began Obed, which means serving. God Almighty, if God gives you strength inside, he wants you to serve. Good God Almighty. I'm getting ready to chunk it at you, brother. And then Jesse, uh, uh, Obed beget Jesse, which means I possess, uh, I stand out, uh, I exist, uh, I have substance. Look at what God had already invested in them. And Jesse beget David, which means beloved. If you hang around, God's got a plan for your victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you just like Bishop said, if you hang around, God has a plan for your victory. And the part that I love Bishop about it is yes. that David was just like the lineage that he came from. Yes. Where he dealt with his own series of trial, his own series of issues. His own series on the back side of the mountain. Because if you remember, the Bible says that Jesse would not send David into the situations that he was really qualified for. As anointed David was, David was still the one bringing lunch to his brothers. But it would take what was in David to go and fight the giant Goliath. It would take what was in David, although his armor did not fit. And Lord, I gotta stop right there, Bishop, because there's somebody watching right now who is dealing with some situations that are facing some giants, that are facing some things bigger than them and the, and the world is trying to tell them that a certain armor belongs to them but God is saying there's a reason the armor does not fit there's a reason why that perception does not fit there's a reason why you can't go in that direction but God is saying I put everything on the inside of you already not because you're the one but because it was already predestined 
David. There are generations before you. Yes, Ruth. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, old man. There are generations of servants. There are generations of people through warfare that prove that you can get through this. So you need to type in those comments. Get through this right now because victory is on the other side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here's the word. I've noticed this week our preachers, my God, this is the hookup right here. God is already in you. Now, notice when David got here, all of the names of his ancestors uh, was portrayed in his life. Uh, I know some of you preaching this week. Uh, I'm going to call your names because uh, I know I can. Uh, I looked at Nicole uh, Gillen's preach uh, and I looked at Cheryl preach uh, and you know what? Uh, I see that you're embracing uh, what's already inside of you. Uh, hallelujah. You're no longer intimidated uh, by what somebody Else is doing. You're no longer trying to pat on yourself and be like somebody else. Gary, I've always appreciated that about you. Hallelujah. If God put it inside of you, He wants you to bring it out in the name of Jesus. And it's time in this house for whatever God has put in you to come out. Let me tell you something, Melvina. Next Sunday, you better preach like you lost your mind. You better let that word come out of you in the name of Jesus. It's time for us to get in the house. It's time for the bread to be baked up in here in the name of Jesus. The oven is hot. The stove is ready. The cooks have prepared. Let's bake this bread. Let's praise God. Oh, I'm up in here. Woo! All up in here! All up in here! Yes, sir! Aha! God told me it's time to work with the willing. Hey. Can't push a rope. Well, say. Put that in the chair. You cannot push a rope. Ain't nobody call me. Well, who did you call? I've been going through all of this by myself. Why? Who did you tell? It's time. Forget, forget, forget your moments in Moab. 